Hello and welcome to IGN Anime Club episode 64. Yay anime. Yay anime. anime. I'm Callie Flaky. I'm joined by Megan Sullivan. Yo. Mike Mamone. What up? And uh, Keo from Fruits Basket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're not watching the video, you can watch it on all sorts of things, including the Xbox One and PS4 apps. Uh, we're all over the place, um, so you can see Keo and his, all his glory. Uh, this is IGN's conversational show about anime. Uh, Miranda is in Japan for TGS. If you want to see any cool stuff from Tokyo, they went to a One Piece cafe or restaurant yeah. and stuff like yeah, that. Like boss. <laughs> you can uh, follow her Instagram story. Uh, she's at um, Havoc Rose on Instagram, mm-hmm. Havoc with a K. Or you can follow IGN's Instagram story as well, um, which is IGN.com, all the words. Um, and uh, they'll be posting a bunch of stuff on there uh, if you want to see cool Japan things. And then be sure to check out IGN's TGS Hub. Um, please support our TGS content so we can keep going to Japan and making cool things and showing you cool stuff in yes. Japan. The event hub is IGN.com slash events slash TGS, I believe. So uh, it's also just on the front page. So please check it out. They're doing amazing stuff over there. Mm-hmm. Um, but while she's out, we've been watching some stuff, trying to cure our Japan FOMO. <laughs> um, Mike, what have you been watching? Me? Okay, so I caught up with Kuro Makuro, thankfully. Um, I found out that it's actually uh, the first Kerr, because it's still ongoing in Japan. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it ended on a cliffhanger on Netflix, and I'm like, dang it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, um, Great. Yeah, but I mean, it's confirmed. It's funny because I was, I was uh, ranting about this over the weekend, and then literally Crunchyroll dropped news that the season two was going to be uh, available next month on Netflix. Oh, what? Uh, season, I mean, it's weird. It's like they call it season one, but it's not necessarily season one. Um, but uh, either way, um, can't wait for that to happen. <laughs> and then uh, since I'm still trying to figure out what to watch, uh, I decided to catch up to uh, Sweetness and Lightning. Oh, awesome. Um, and that one, well, okay, I'm, I'm like episode eight or nine. Um, and it's still good. I think I, I like it. It's cute. It's very cute. But it's, I don't, I don't see an end to it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, oh, hey, here's a new dish. And then, um, you know, there's some, the dad goes through some problem and tries to make Sumugi happy and she's just being cute. I don't know. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of Waka Kozake. I'm not looking for an end. I'm just looking yeah. for this continuing it's a journey. It's a journey. It's not about the destination. It's about sure. the journey. I, yeah, totally. Um, I guess because I'm comparing it to other ones, other shows uh, this season. But um, I'm still enjoying it. It's funny because I, I, this is the show that I'm watching with my girlfriend. And I was like, I'm going to have to catch up. So <laughs> you don't mind. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm watching that. Uh, You're right watching now. more JoJo. And I'm watching more JoJo. Yes. Of course. Which Obviously. I heard was getting really crazy. Oh, it's getting real crazy. Like some supervillain just appeared oh, yeah, recently. Yeah. So he, he finally uh, did something like a couple episodes ago. And now uh, Jojo and, or sorry, jo- Josuke and his crew pretty much are now dealing with him in some way. And yeah, it's, it's, it's. It's hard to talk about without it, spoiling I, I it. Like yeah. you can see Mike I mean, like I mentally to, cartwheeling around. Yeah. Some spoilers. I really like, want to do flipping. Uh, vlog type videos where we talk about episodes uh, on camera for the channel. Mm-hmm. So eventually maybe I'll do for that. The for the YouTube channel, which channel. is YouTube.com slash Anime Club. Mm-hmm. Really easy to find. Oh, so yeah. if you want to see stuff like that, let us know. Yes, please let us know and we'll do that for you. Um, because it's very hard to dance around spoilers on this show. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know. When, we're, so... when we're talking about what we're watching and if we want to recommend something, like it's hard to recommend it without being like, this mm-hmm. is exactly what happens and it blew my mind oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So it's like, This is why you need to watch ReZero. Oh, I can't mm-hmm. talk about that because it's a major spoiler. Yeah. So just go watch it. <gasps> Speaking of which, <gasps> I love ReZero. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm almost caught up. I was gonna watch more last night, but then I was, uh, I had a thing I had to do. Um, but it's just, just so good. I was telling Megan, I don't often get really into fantasy stuff. Like it takes a lot. Mm-hmm. Like there's certain genre, you know, like everybody has that genre, they'll, they'll watch anything in that. Like I, wa- I will watch anything about murder. I'll watch literally anything <laughs> about murder. It's my favorite genre, especially school murder. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything murder mystery or whatever. That's just, a great pull quote. 
<laughs> oh, I for like a show. <laughs> I love, I love murder. murder. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite genre. I really, I will watch any like horror mystery like, thing because like, like even if it's not good, even if it's not good, I'll have fun watching it. Mm-hmm. With fantasy, it takes, it has to be really good for me to watch it. And mm-hmm. I know some people are like really love fantasy and that's awesome. I'm just like, I wish I was one of those people I'm not. Um, so ReZero is like sort of fantastical, a little supernatural and uh, it just is so captivating for me. Um, I'm like, I, I'm not over it ever. I like dream in ReZero. <laughs> like I am a huge <laughs> dream in ReZero. <laughs> um, that might be a little so frightening because Subaru goes some, through some stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so obviously we've talked about this show. I'm not going to recap everything again, but it is about a, a, a kind of a neat who goes into a fantasy world and um, he is terrible. So, yeah, um, terrible. but it's 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 really good. And yeah. it's not just a oh no, they got oh, stuck no. in another JRPG. Oh, no. We got it. I we have gotta magic save the world. powers now. And yeah. there's a girl. Like it's just, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's that setup, but a little twist on it. So yeah, definitely check it Some out. Twists and turns. And then uh, I'm also starting to become just full on Dragon Ball trash. So uh, <laughs> the best kind of trash. Um, though. I live in a house. And uh, with some people who work here, and uh, one of them has all of Dragon Ball, uh, the manga, the original manga. Yep. Which is just aces, and I know Megan's probably further in it than I am. I, so I'll how, how far are you into that, actually? Not far at all. I just started it, like, yesterday. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so I'm halfway through the first Dragon Ball, mm-hmm. just to separate it from Dragon Ball Z, just to make that very clear. Oh, yes. And I'm loving the manga. It's really well done. Nice. Really like the characters. Because I try to watch it. I've told this story before, so I apologize. But I couldn't get into Dragon Ball Z back in the day because there was no frame of reference. There was no context. Mm-hmm. Who are these people? How are they related to, to each other? Mm-hmm. I could tell. I was like, I'm supposed to know something more. Yeah. So finally, one of our coworkers recommended just like, just read the manga. Read the original manga. It goes by really fast. Like, I was able to to zip through 500 pages of it in like less than two hours. Really enjoy it. It's just, it's so easy to consume. Uh-huh. That is the it's beauty so of manga though. Yeah, right? <laughs> like just, uh, you can just de- You just devour it. Yeah. You know, it would take you forever to do like, I mean to do that one day with One Piece where I'm like, I'm not going to sit down and watch <laughs> 700 episodes of One Piece. Oh, but the but music the manga. The, no, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I have tons of soundtracks for anime oh, yeah. stuff. I'm yeah. like, yeah, but the music, that I can consume. Mm-hmm. But you can play the music while you read the manga. That's true. Yep. See, That's there you true. go. Two different things. But yeah, really, Dragon Ball. If you can do that, that'd be really skillful to time it perfectly. No, I know. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Um, actually, yeah, I, I forgot to mention, I've oh. also caught up with Honda-kun on uh, Funimation. Oh, how is that? It's, I actually kind of li- love it, actually. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it reminds me of Tanaka-kun and uh, Sakamoto from uh, last season. Oh, I loved Tanaka-kun. Um, yeah, so in this case, though, he's, uh, his problem is that he's, um, well, he's super popular, first off. But he <laughs> thinks that everyone hates him. Right. <gasps> me. <You know>? So, <laughs> me. Relatable. Uh, so like he, he becomes antisocial and oh. he, he like loves calligraphy. He's really good. He's like really good at calligraphy and he, uh, he he'll talk to people in a certain way because he thinks they hate them. But then just doing that makes him look cooler. So people, <laughs> so it's, it's really interesting. And then now he, he kind of has like a fan club also. Social anxiety, the anime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Pretty so, much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, right now, like it's it's interesting because it has like little short stories within an episode. Like it won't be just like, like is it like vignettes? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like it'll, it'll, it won't be just like you know one particular situation and then that's the episode. He'll it'll be like one person and then that storyline and then all of a sudden he meets another person and then he's dealing with that. Um, and I actually caught up like in one day. Nice. Um, Sounds like I have something so, to do tonight. <laughs> yeah. So if you like uh, like Sakamoto, haven't you heard? What's what's Haven't you heard, heard of Sakamoto? Sakamoto? Yes, that and Takakun uh, is always listless. Uh, you should check out Hanakun because that is one that you probably enjoy. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. Going to springboard off of that before I forget. Berserk is getting berserk. So hey. hey, so tune in this Friday for my final review of Berserk. That is the end of the Tower of Conviction story arc. It's getting insane. I didn't realize how much, like, I knew there was symbolism in Berserk, but I actually went online and someone broke down a huge, like, just, like, wrote up this huge dissertation on how much, like, symbolism is in it and how much allegory is in it, and it gives really good reference for what's happening, because, unfortunately, the show doesn't always do a great job of telling you what's going on. You either have to read the manga or you have mm. to read one of these, 
huge like essays on what's really going on. But it's it's getting really good, and it's the final episode, and it's gonna get insane. Ah. So oh, stay tuned, kids. That's happening. There are over 200 comments on the last review. Nice. So somebody out there is reading my <laughs> reviews and have stuff to say because Berserk yes. is definitely. Definitely unique. Yes. It's and a very on, different show. On that note, thank you to everybody who's supported the reviews. Like I said, like 10 minutes ago, it really, really means a lot to us because it the does. better our content does, the more we can make. Mm -hmm. And if you want to see more anime content, like it just re really means a lot when you share it. Like I know I'm doing like a like, comment, subscribe thing right now, but it really oh, yeah. does no, it really like, helps. like personally mean a lot to us. So um, mm -hmm. it does. Thank shout you. Shout out to you guys. I'm sure. Uh, also, just on a quick note of, of content we're putting up, I, Miranda will be posting TGS stuff in the Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash group slash IGN Anime Club. It's the official group. Um, her One Piece galleries in there and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so there's lots of places where you can find Yay it. Anime. <laughs> Yay, Yay, anime. Yay, anime. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, I think basically I just need to sit down tonight and watch a bunch of stuff because I was like playing Call of Duty all weekend. It's, that's not a bad yeah, thing. That's pretty good though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not an anime though. It's so. anime-ish kind of but not really. Anything could be an anime if you try hard enough. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Including your life. Um, <laughs> anyway, on to our topic. Um, we do have a little bit of a shorter topic today because we skipped Watch Party last week. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching Psychopaths with us, stay tuned. Um, but I just wanted to do something like a springboard off of the Crunchyroll Funimation partnership news that we got last two weeks ago last week? Last week. Uh, yeah. last, last week. Basically, if you didn't hear, Crunchyroll and Funimation are going to be teaming up to split up the responsibilities of anime. So Funimation will be handling dubs and they'll be sharing libraries, basically. That's that's the distilled version. If you want to see more, um, we have the story on IGN. Just look Crunchyroll. Yeah, Funimation. so Crunchyroll does subs, Funimation does dubs, and then Funimation will handle all the hard copies, Blu-rays, whatnot. Yeah. So and that's the gist of it. In exchange, Crunchyroll will be getting a lot of the library, including Psychopaths, um, later on and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, if you want more details, that story is on IGN. Um, but in that vein, uh, I want to talk about anime worth rewatching. Now, if you don't have one subscription, a subscription to one, if you're missing out on Funimations, for example, their library of stuff, you'll have more access to it. Um, and maybe you're rewatching an old show or rewatching mm -hmm. uh, a new show, but dubbed this time or something like that. So I want to yeah. talk about anime that are worth a rewatch that maybe improve upon the second viewing. Yes. So um, I immediately, one of our previous watch party shows, my first thought was Steins Gate, because <laughs> Steins Gate is so confusing. <laughs> And then you go through it again, you're like, oh. Yeah, you <laughs> see all the little <laughs> foreshadowing that they do, and you're like, that's really clever. You bring it fully back around. Well, yeah, like that's something that, even though you know the story, it rewatching enhances it because you see all the foreshadowing. You can appreciate the brilliance of that foreshadowing. It's like when I reread Harry Potter for the first time. Like, I after I finished reading, because I would reread them like multiple times a year. And like every time I would pick up on new foreshadowing and be like, she's so brilliant. <laughs> so, um, that's sort of like it with Steins Gate. I mean, you could also like instead of rewatching if you wanted to like play the visual novel, which is now on Steam um, and stuff like that, you can get a lot of the story in addition to the appreciation of the crafting of the story, which is yeah. my mm. one of my favorite parts of analyzing anime. Because I do remember the first two episodes of Steins Gate being really confusing, like, what is happening? Oh, and yeah. then I, by the yeah. time you get to the end, I was like, what? Mind blown. <laughs> yeah. If you joined us for that watch party way back when, I didn't like it until like episode five or six. Yeah. I was like, this, what is going on? The characters are annoying. And then episode like five or six happens, and I was like, uh. Oh. Yep, and, and <laughs> falls into place. So now I kind of want to go back and rewatch those first episodes so I can mm. really appreciate it. Have you guys watched the dub for Steins Gate? I oh, that's, that was my preferred way of watching it. Oh, okay. That oh, was nice. the way I wanted to watch it because it has really good English voice actors in it. Mm -hmm. Nice. So highly recommend that. And you get to see that good. I am mad scientist, I am so cool scene, but in a different But way. in a very <laughs> different awkward light. <laughs> <laughs> but you would appreciate it more if you'd watch the sub first. See, bringing it back around. <laughs> good job. Good job. Uh, the next one on the list, um, this is another one that I put because uh, of course I'm talking about this anime. Of is Polo Magi Monica Magica. That anime is sort of a bait, bait and switch. I don't think you have to not know what it's about before watching it. And obviously if you've heard me talk about it and you haven't watched it, you kind of know what it's about. I'm not gonna spoil anything, um, but it's like Magical, gir magical Girl-esque, mm. but not. <laughs> so um, when I first started watching it, I was like, what, no, what? 
what no and I'm like crying you know uh, and I think on a second rewatch there's a lot um, this is a shaft animation um, they do a lot with art styles and mixing of art styles and I feel like now that I know what the story is I could really take that in more upon a second viewing and I've watched the first couple episodes again and just been like oh Oh, that's what. Oh, oh, that explains that. And I just like felt very smart because I was showing it to someone who doesn't watch anime, and I was like, ah, <laughs> I've done no, it. You know, <laughs> I added one sort of late to the list. I was like, you know what, Spice and Wolf, because I think that yeah. show throws people like they're not, they see this like really cute girl with fox ears and a fox tail, and this cute guy, oh. and he's a merchant, and you're like, oh, all right, they're gonna have crazy magical adventures, and it's like mm. economics, the anime, and if it throws people at first, like, oh like, God, no, what learning. Learning Economics. education. My cat girl. <laughs> <laughs> what, this fox girl's going to teach me stuff? I don't know, man. I don't know about this education thing. Wait, it ends up being ace. really, really good. And you do have to pay attention. So like the second mm-hmm. time you go back and watch it, you pick up on things like, oh, I see how that ties in. Now I understand like the monetary value of A, B, and C and while they're doing this crazy thing to sort of get ahead of the market. Like mm-hmm. at first you're overwhelmed. You're like, I can't understand this. This is, you know, something I had to learn in college and I don't want to go back there anymore. <laughs> oh yeah. And it's then you're just like said macroeconomics, microeconomics. And then you're like, actually mm. this is really good. And again, English dub. Really, really, really excellent. Really, really nice. excellent. I feel like for a complicated anime like that, I might want to watch the dub. Yeah. I, I, I generally prefer subs, but that's one where I'd be like, What's going on? <laughs> yeah, because you're concentrating on like what they're talking about, but then yeah. you had to read the subtitles. I'm like, I'm like supply and demand. Remember, Kelly? Yeah, yeah. Okay, supply and demand. You're like, what is <laughs> buy low, sell high? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, that's one I would highly go back, nice. highly recommend going back to and watching because then you're like, now I feel smart. I know it's coming, and now I can really focus on why they're doing what they're doing, and it's really yeah. smart. Mm-hmm. Sick. Yeah. No. Um, the only reason I rewatch anime is if there is a dub. So like I would watch it subbed first, and then uh, you know and the other times I'll be like, oh hey, the dub's actually really good, so I would start watching that. And that's the reason why I put Cycle Pass on here is because mm. now that we're doing this watch party again, I decided to watch it in dub, and I'm actually really enjoying it. I I think the voice oh, actors are great. I yeah. didn't know you were watching the dub. Yeah, I am. Cool. Yeah. Um, I think I did the same thing for Cowboy. Actually, no, I did not. Uh, Cowboy Bebop. I watched the dub, but I want to watch the sub. Yeah, a lot of people watch the dub because that dub is like one of the best yeah. dubs ever. Uh, which is another one you should also rewatch. Yeah, um, yeah. Cowboy Bebop is really great. In fact, I did that the first time I saw Cowboy Bebop way back when it first mm-hmm. came out. I didn't like it because it I didn't know what to expect from it. And then being a little more adult, I sat down and was like, Oh, I get mm-hmm. what this is about. This is really brilliant. And again, foreshadowing, which is really oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, that's a a good point. Also, like sometimes you didn't appreciate something. Uh, when you were younger because either you know you didn't have the life experience or it escaped you or whatever I mean there's like movies and TV shows and all that stuff like I like friends way more now than I'm an adult <laughs> for example <It's> me too because <laughs> <laughs> when you're a kid you're like wow what? and now I'm like yeah. how do they afford that apartment yeah like, <laughs> right um, and there's things you miss yeah and I'm like <laughs> oh that joke that was a joke that about was the a sex joke. <laughs> so, like, you know what you know it's a perfect example of go back and watch it's like as a little kid I watched the Simpsons and I got like <gasps> the top level of jokes and then you and go the you go next deeper. level and the next mm. level and they'll have like spring Byington references and teapot dome scandal references and as a mm. kid that goes over your head and as an adult you laugh hysterically you're like <laughs> I can't believe you just made a teapot dome reference in <laughs> this episode that's the brilliant of Matt Greening's work is like there's a surface level I mean I mean, you can go. Shakespeare did this also. It's not just Matt Greening. Mm-hmm. But sure. Like, Shakespeare's joke. He had the dick jokes, and then oh, can I say that? And then we're uh, <laughs> gonna find out. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I gotta find the timestamp. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> he has the inappropriate jokes, and then he has the uh, class level jokes, and he layers it for the audience. Um, so they're obviously every medium does that. So anime also does that. And there's things that I watch now, and I'm like, like even Dragon Ball, I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah. There, there, uh, yeah, there, yeah, there's there's yeah. something. There's also cultural references. Like there, yeah. there's things that you don't get at first, but if you get more familiar with the Japanese culture. Like, you're like, ah, oh, now you finally get that joke, that yeah. thing that I was like, why is this a joke? Why is it funny? And then you're like, ah, oh, okay, it's a commentary <laughs> yeah. on Japanese society. Yeah, I like, get jokes. Yeah, like going back and watching like some of my first anime, like going back and looking at Fruits Basket now and being like, oh, I know so much more than I did when I was 13. Right. And just like 
no m- more no more no no more <laughs> about uh, the culture as, as much as I can know as someone who doesn't live there obviously but just being a little more educated on that um, what yeah a, yeah what well else? we covered a lot just now we covered things with dubs that you oh, watched yeah. as a sub or for, vice versa um, I also put on here that I already want to rewatch ReZero that's another <laughs> one where like to get yeah. a greater appreciation of the plot I want to start over um I think Miranda already started rewatching it with her boyfriend. Oh, really? So I'm like, oh, I gotta get a boyfriend, and then I rewatch <laughs> it. Or you just rewatch it or for you. <laughs> but but that sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have a cat now. I live with a cat. Maybe I'll watch it with a cat. Oh, and and an adorable doggy and a dog. I'll watch it with my animals. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's no that totally. One. Yeah, Rizzo has a lot of like little cut scenes where you just don't really quite understand. But then after watching the following episodes like oh that's yeah. what that meant yeah but anyway um other ones i put on here haikyuu mm. uh, mainly because season uh, three is coming out soon get that refresher mm-hmm. yes that uh, is another good reason to rewatch something is if you forget what yeah. the heck happened yeah. <laughs> i think this isn't on the list but i think another candidate for rewatching if you liked it the first time around or maybe if you were unsure about it is attack on titan since season two is apparently happening mm-hmm. um Some, someday but uh, <laughs> yeah i think that one not so much for the plot but like just to refresh your memory on what's going on and maybe like evaluate uh on a, upon a second viewing because like for me i think the first half of the season is is really like much stronger than the second half um i want to see if maybe i got like way too hype about it like i, I need to take a step back and reevaluate how i think uh, about that show so i might yeah. Start watching it. Oh, shoot. I just realized. Mm-hmm. Berserk is a perfect example. You can't understand the current season without going back and either watching the Golden Age arc movies or the 90s anime. Yep. Just realize there's no context for it. So, <laughs> yeah, do your research, kids. It's really important to understand what the heck is going on. Oh, so, that's yeah. another good reason mm-hmm. when, like, a anime has been out of commission. Like, um, oh, shoot. Alan Walker. What's the name uh, of the Green, anime? Green yeah. Green. That, yeah. That's now going forward as well. And that's a little more tricky because there's yeah. a chunk of episodes we didn't get in the US so that's a little frustrating mm. but that's another good one when you're like all right I want to know what's going on so I can at least study up from here to here yeah I know totally Berserk and D. Grayman those especially with these seasons I want to know what happens from the beginning to that point just so it can start it again mm-hmm. yeah um, which is kind of tough considering how many episodes there are yeah um, but uh, eventually yeah that's you know that's another good reason to, to rewatch yeah. I always feel like this brings it back around to read the manga it's the fastest yeah. way to catch up with anything. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, well, that would bring me to my next point, but I, we didn't finish up the list. I think there's a couple of them. Oh, ones. yeah, yeah. I threw uh, Hunter x Hunter and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood in here. Well, uh, mainly because yeah. these are one of my top favorite anime, to be honest. And they're short. They're not, no, we're not, they're, they're not too short. But they're <laughs> short enough that they're not like One Piece like status or not status. Yeah. That you can like, you know, with your friends who enjoy the series as well, rewatch, you know. Have a good time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, also with Hunter x Hunter, like they're on hiatus now because um the creator is just taking a break. Oh, that's right. I, yeah. I heard about so, that. So like I mean all we can do is rewatch, so <sighs> Yep. <sighs> it's okay but though. Some, I hope I hope it gets better. <laughs> sometimes rewatching stuff like with friends is really fun because you can comment on it. Um it's one of the frustrating things is when you watch something with somebody for the first time, but they've already seen it. Because I was oh, watching yeah. It Follows this weekend, and I hadn't seen it, and like two people that I was watching it with had seen it. So during the movie, they were like, "Oh, that's weird," and they were like critiquing it during the movie, and I was like, "Wait until I'm done," because the, <laughs> oh, that's but then so we had, frustrating. <laughs> it, well, I mean, it was it was fun, and we were having a good time, oh, but sure. like it probably would have been a more interesting conversation. Like I would have been able to contribute more if I had seen it already. Uh-huh. So I like all of my friends who have seen FMA Brotherhood. Like if we all got together and we're like, oh, and this thing, and this thing, like it would be a party. We would have popcorn and we would oh, like yeah. have alcohol probably. <laughs> <laughs> Drink Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, but I do, just backtracking a little bit uh, for things, you reminded me, things that don't necessarily hold up on a rewatch or aren't good for rewatching. One of them would be a super long epic mm. like One Piece. You, you can't rewatch seven. I've I just, actually I'm sorry. reconsidered rewatching. What? <laughs> Only, be, I mean, certain Maybe episodes. Certain I'm episodes. not going to do the fillers, well, but no, yeah. yeah, you would rewatch certain episodes mm. for a super long show like that, but yeah. not all of them. Definitely. Because please go out, like please eat 
Like, don't forget <laughs> yeah. to eat, <laughs> sleep, um, drink water. Yeah. I do, and this is so like not on brand for me, but I do want to say that Pokemon doesn't necessarily hold up on a rewatch that well. I love the Indigo League. I will rewatch the Indigo League anytime. Yes, I was about to say. I Indigo <laughs> Indigo League is choice. I'll watch it anytime. <laughs> it's perfect. You cry, you laugh, mm-hmm. there's puns, there's Team Rocket, and it's just good. And I'll watch the I actually maybe I should rewatch it for this because I haven't watched the sub, and then I could learn all about Satoshi. Oh. Um which is Ash's name in Japan. Um but I do think that maybe because if I didn't have the nostalgia for Pokemon, mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, what? <laughs> Is the sub available anywhere? I don't know. Don't hmm. watch it if it's not legal. I actually <laughs> don't know if the sub is available. Yeah. I've only watched That's the, the other frustrating thing, too. I was going to bring Evangelion, but there's no way to watch the 90s yeah. anime without actually like buying it. And even oh. that's hard, like, hard to do. And yeah. Max is still mad at me for not finishing the original anime. I'm like, where am I <laughs> supposed to watch it? Either yeah. somebody brings in their old DVD collection, or I don't know what to tell yeah, you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're selling like off eBay, but they're so expensive. That's, you know? Yeah, I mean, they're yeah. almost prohibitively so. So mm-hmm. I've never... Yeah. Just, I'm never gonna know how hard I'll cry and get upset and depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never know how hard I'll cry. I'll never know uh, how hard I'll cry. But my point is, sometimes there's nostalgia things mm-hmm. that maybe are still good, like still enjoyable, but maybe not like the most earth shattering thing you thought they were. I still maintain that Avatar, The Last Airbender, is one of the most fantastic shows in the world. Oh, yeah. But the first season is definitely more Nickelodeon. <laughs> and more for kids. And I remember rewatching the first season for the first time since I'd seen it. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot it had this flavor. And then it, it grows and evolves. And that's such a cool thing to watch. Yeah. I just had this conversation with my friend about Steven Universe, because I'm still mm-hmm. in the first season. And he's like, wait till it gets going where it kind of drops the, you know, like kitty, the mm-hmm. kitty thing and then gets like more adult. Like it's still for kids, but really it's for adults type thing. And I think it's interesting yeah. that certain shows, they find their rhythm and then they turn into kind of what they were supposed to be all along. I mean, Harry Potter did that too. It grows up with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I, I think that, um, yeah, like I I think that kids shows that don't condescend to kids are the best way to do it. And so I like when kid shows evolve a little bit from the, what do you think? Children. Yeah. Right. Um, I like when it's a little more elevated and trusting that kids are smart. So, um, that's a, just a quick aside for the nostalgia goggles, the whole tangent. Sometimes things are good. Sometimes they're not as good as you thought. You go back, you're like, oh, yeah. this uh, isn't as good as, oh, this, yeah, this makes no sense. Yeah. This wasn't as funny as I thought it was. Right. Um, this, the next thing is actually a question for the audience, because like I said, I'm starting to become real devoted to being Dragon Ball trash. Um, <laughs> but my Dragon Ball knowledge is very limited because I was really young. And so I remember bits and pieces. And obviously I remember over 9,000 because everybody was alive in 2009 <laughs> when that was a thing. <laughs> um, but uh, I would like to know if DBZ is better than Kai. Because Kai is like the, it eliminates everything from Dragon Ball Z that wasn't in the manga. Um, so it eliminates stuff that's not like technically canon or something. But Dragon Ball Z has like the nostalgia factor for me. So I'm like, I want to watch Z, but maybe I should watch Kai. So this is a question for you. Which one is worth the, or is Dragon Ball Z worth the rewatch? Or should I try Kai? To be honest, I'll probably just watch Z because I'll be like, mm-hmm. Toonami or what? No, four kids, no. My, I was so young, you guys. <laughs> I saw it on WB. <laughs> oh, yeah. At like 8 in the morning. <laughs> oh, man. The good old days yeah. where you're like, this is anime? I thought it was a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, I saw it on UPN. It came before uh, or after Sailor Moon. So that that's my memory of Shonen Dragon Ball. Shoujo Power Hour. Yeah, <laughs> it totally was. It was totally Power Hour. And then finally they got things like Pokemon and Digimon and other mm-hmm. stuff. And I was like, mm-hmm. what is all this? <laughs> um yeah so that's a question to you is that something that falls under maybe the pokemon category of still enjoyable but maybe not like as super crazy as when you were a kid um let me know specifically me i'm selfishly asking all of you because i we don't care so (laughs) no except for kelly (laughs) no No, everyone can care but i really i'm so i'm just getting really into dragon ball and i want to make sure i do it right um i'm interested too like i'm all too wrong except for gt 
maybe yeah. I don't know. Well, I heard things. Or the one that the the live action movie the writer apologized for. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, but we don't talk about that. It's like Crystal Skull. What is that? Yeah. It doesn't exist. Or it's not a thing. Yeah, <laughs> that too. These are things that don't exist. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but, but yeah. yeah anyway, is there anything else that you watched maybe when you were younger that now you're like, um, uh, maybe not as fun on the rewatch? Yeah. Most of this. I want to say Digimon. Digimon. It's kind of tough to rewatch, to be honest. It just, yeah. I'm not. I don't know. It's 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 just not as enjoyable anymore for me. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I play a lot of the games, but then when it comes, it it just feels slow. Yeah. And uh, it's not as like like Pokemon has. You know, even if it's like just hey, we're gonna help these guys carry these eggs down the street. Like it's, <laughs> I just enjoy it more. Um, uh, yeah, and then like you say, I agree with you, Pokemon. Like I have the Pokemon TV app on my phone. Me too. And I used, well, I don't do it anymore, but I used to like sleep as I watch the episodes. Like I just turn it on and just listen to it because <laughs> it's I can I, it's I can comforting. it is, but also I can like because I do it so it. often I can picture what the episode's about. Um, but then now they did this update where it doesn't turn off the app after the episode. Mm-hmm. It just plays on. So my battery dies by the morning. <laughs> oh, so I'm like, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. Oh. <laughs> um, but the, yeah, the Pokemon TV app is great if you want to just keep, you know, just pick up some because they don't do the whole season. It's like parts, yeah, like some certain episodes. Yeah. And then the following week or two, they do the next like five episodes yeah. for each season. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, those are the ones that come to mind anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, just really quickly, a quick aside, because I remembered this. Um, I can't think of an example for an anime, but this happens to me when I'm rewatching things. It, mostly like Western stuff, like South Park comes to mind, where I'll rewatch it and I'll be like, ooh, <laughs> oh, that was really problematic. And so I'll rewatch something that I remember as being good, and then I'll watch it years later and be like, oh, that was really sexist, or something like that. Mm. And so I know that happens with anime, but of course I take a little more lenient hand with anime because I am. Uh, not Japanese and it's, I am not in a position to necessarily like critique Japanese feminism for example so um, I'm not as choosy with that yeah but I, to your point that does it's easier to see that in a western content like, I had that same problem with Family Guy where I was like mm. ooh I thought this was funnier than it actually is and it's oh, okay yeah, that was it that was it yeah these all these non sequiturs <laughs> yeah, yeah not funny okay um, moving on yeah, yeah. I, I can't uh, off the top of my head, think of an anime that necessarily made me yeah. cringe like that. I think I, I, I think like my attitude. I can't think of an anime, but my attitude has changed about certain things that I accepted because it's like fun or whatever. And I'm like, this is this might be a bigger social issue in Japan that I wish they would talk about. More. Oh well, yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, uh, Lee Ron in Gurren Lagann, the whole thing where it's like, look at this feminine man, and the he's like the punchline of every joke. And I, I really like that anime, but. I don't find that recurring joke funny at all. Like stuff like that where like yeah. maybe when you watched it originally you're like fine with it and then you learn a little bit more about the world or whatever and sometimes you see something you're like mm, yeah. Maybe don't do that. Yeah, maybe that was not. one thing that bothered me in uh, Grand Logan. Yeah. I mean, and that's just that's just an example of things. I can't think of any anime altogether where I'm like, "Oh, that did, that didn't help hold up very well." Like I went back and watched uh, dubbed 90s Sailor Moon a few weeks ago. I still laughed hysterically. <laughs> I was like, oh, the dub for this is so bad, it's good. <laughs> yeah, so there are some things that ironically hold up well mm-hmm. that you can rewatch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Good the fact points. that there were like four voices for yeah. quote unquote Darian, three voices for like Sailor Moon. <laughs> and they like cut out all the supposed scandalous stuff, so inadvertently made it worse with kissing cousins and one ah oh, it's just it's yeah, not good cousins making out is worse than two girls yeah okay, I'm like, okay good <laughs> l- good logical choice there good job yeah. Deke. <laughs> anyway but yeah so uh let us know what you think maybe something you rewatched that either bugged you or you were like oh that's not the way i remembered it or whatever um and other stuff that you would recommend rewatching or just watching for the first time mm-hmm. uh, especially now that we have a little bit easier access to anime yes or- Thank you, Crunchyroll Thank and you. Funimation yeah. for teaming up. That's awesome. <laughs> um, all right, moving on. Uh, it's time for the 
double feature watch party. Yeah. Uh, no. If this, <laughs> if this is your first rap horn, beep beep beep. beep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> if uh, <laughs> we we have fun around here. Um, if you have not joined us for the watch party before, it's sort of like a book club. We um, you guys vote on a show, and we all watch it two episodes at a time and discuss it in depth. And it's a really great way to watch some complicated shows. That's way, the way oh, yeah. uh, I watched Steins Gate for the first time, and it really helped my understanding. So mm-hmm. we're currently watching Psychopaths. Again, um, we talked about this a little bit uh, the last watch party, but um, please keep in mind if you are just joining and you want to catch up, we're not that far into Psychopaths yet. It is very violent. There's sexual assault going on in it. Um, it's very, very heavy. Um, so please exercise caution. Um, but we are on episodes five, six, seven, and eight. We're doing uh, two to catch up, two watch parties. Um, so if you want to catch up, stop now. And go watch Psychopaths. Yeah. Um, and come back. And then come back and, and talk about it with us. So uh, you can send us your comments on uh, the Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash IGN Anime Club, the official group. Um, and you can also tweet at us using the hashtag IGN Anime, IGN mm-hmm. So just to start us up, episode five. So going back a little bit, I'm already sort of forgetting <laughs> what happens in each episode. They kind of blur together for me. Like I know what's happening overall, mm-hmm. but to break down... Um, what happens in episode five? I feel like here we go. Let's just Neto del Toro, one of the real MVPs, kind of breaks <laughs> down. So Neto del Toro on the Facebook group says, uh, "In the, on the surface, this episode seems quite straightforward." About episode five, uh, they identified the culprit through his pattern. So the culprit being the person stealing the avatars. Uh, right. Now I remember. So it's the person mm-hmm. who st- uh, killed uh, the talisman and stole that avatar, yes. Spooky Boogie, yes. and and then a third avatar that we were being introduced to. Um, so they identified the culprit through his patterns, went after him, and made him pop. Simple enough, right? Well, not so much. What was at first glance the reveal and subsequent elimination of one of Makishima's, uh, who is the, the white-haired main bad guy, mm-hmm. Makishima's subordinates, was also a, gl- a glance into his methodology and psyche. The dude is a straight-up sociopath. Couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't recognize this world's authority, nor does he see anyone that does as a fellow human being, as shown by how nonchalantly he disposed of Mito. He wasn't even condescending. He wasn't let down by his failure. He actually just sounded bored. So in that scene where Mito, they shot Mito in the arm, and he's like missing an arm, and he goes yeah. home, and he's like, my avatars. And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm yeah. so sorry. You're that yeah. upset. He, uh, um, Makishima kind of like warps them and is like... You could have done a better job. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. See, so, yeah, it was like un- Just, it was almost unceremonious. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Um, and then continue with Neto. He sounded like a researcher whose experiment didn't turn up quite like he intended to, and immediately moved on to the next iteration. The episode also showed what kinds of subjects. Remember, he doesn't see them as equals. Makashima surrounds himself with, like he himself put it when talking to Mito, since you lacked a face, you were simply able to wear any kind of mask. I think that's a really. I just want to stop there for a second because that's a really. Um, it's sort of like that chameleon thing that some people do where like if they don't have an identity, they can kind of adopt what they want to and put on a, like I used to feel like this in high school where I was like, I don't really know who I am still because mm-hmm. I was in high school. And so I'd just be like, uh, today I'll be uh, one of the nerds and then I'll be a band geek and then I'll uh, talk, try to talk to the cheerleaders and never mind, I don't want to do that. And then, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just, I really liked that line. Since you lacked a face, you were simply able to wear any kind of mask. That's mm. profound. Um, and uh, with that kind of canvas to work with, Makishima is able to shape them, his subordinates, in a way that better suits his intentions for a particular goal. This world is his laboratory, and he's eager for knowledge. Oh, Thank yeah. you, Neto Totoro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. That was a wonderful <laughs> summation. Um, yeah, I mean, Psychopaths just keeps making me think about, like, obviously, it's a futuristic, dystopian sort of society, but it it like any dystopian story it makes you think about current society Mm -hmm. and it also makes me think about myself um so like i said it made me think of like in high school where you feel kind of like a social chameleon um because if you lack a face you can wear any mask um i wasn't a social chameleon everyone knew who i was and they left me alone and i was fine oh that sounds (laughs) nice it sure wasn't but that's a different story (laughs) but but it's two sides to every coin Uh, (laughs) basically being 16 sucks um, but that's a good sensation. But it gets better. One day you'll be 17. It'll suck less. <laughs> um, Etc. Et it, 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 gets, it gets way better. It gets, um, it gets way better. But you know, to your point, it's like there is something profound about the bath. Like you can wear any kind of mask. There's a certain fluidity to that. You can blend in anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, that's yeah. what allowed this person to do what they did. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's very interesting seeing how crime works in this world uh, with the civil system. Like 
the kinds of so this is a cyber crime um which we have now which is like the the way it works and and how they determine who it was it's just really fascinating to me like oh we narrowed down the users who stopped visiting there yeah I like that there is a one foot in our reality, so there's like a basis to jump off, and it's like I can see this happening in our society. We're like one step away from most of these things, right? So it's super amazing, technologically speaking. Yeah. Yes, in fact, Carter says so. We finally learned the backstory, or at least part of it, to Kogami. He's originally an investigator. I'm sure some of our wiser group members could have figured it out, as Ko has showed off his crime-solving ability a couple times now. Most notably was in episode five when he was able to pinpoint out our avatar-stealing culprit. What is dark to think about, and the show hinted at it, is Akane falling down the same path. Mm -hmm. We've already learned she thinks outside the box, and if she gets too close with the Enforcers, Co. specifically, things could go very poorly. I really, that did not occur to me so much. I mean, like, I know they're hinting at, like, investigators can get, because it's happened, like you said, Megan, like, this does have a foot in our reality, as does most dystopian fiction. Um like 1984 and stuff like that, which Psychopaths mm-hmm. has these vibes from. Yes, definitely. Um, is people who are detectives or who work with crime in any capacity in real life, it's a hard job. Like I was really, I really wanted to study criminology um, really badly. Like I wanted to be, a det- I wanted to work at the uh, FBI real bad. I was like, Ooh. I'm gonna go to Quantico and I'm gonna do this whole thing. Cause you like, love murder. I love murder. Bring it back around. <laughs> Um, but I didn't end up doing that because then I was like, oh, video games are basically murder. murder. Yeah, it's, it's, um, <laughs> I, I just, it kills time. I didn't do that, but uh. I'm still, hey, uh, uh, I'm still, I'm still really into that. Um, and I, I, I uh, was talking to somebody here who actually majored in criminology and ended up in the same place I did, which is interesting. And she was saying that, um, it, she knew she couldn't do it for a job because it was it got so heavy because you just if you see a cold case or something you see something that can't be solved it mm-hmm. weighs on you because it's like there's no justice for this victim and stuff like that so then you kind of see that with Kogami where he's so haunted especially because his subordinate we'll see in one of the later episodes mm-hmm. right in this group um, his subordinate died and it was like a grisly death where he was like made plastic with the plastic resin or whatever. Yeah. Um, I forget how they phrased it in the in the sub. Mm-hmm. Um, but th- that kind of thing weighs on you. Like if you can't solve it or if you just see heinous crime after heinous crime and like grisly scenes like some people that is, that's very hard and it makes your figurative hue very cloudy. So um, we see that happening like that is definitely a possibility mm-hmm. and that didn't occur to me when this show started like oh some of the enforcers were probably former investigators. It makes perfect sense but i like didn't right and think oh, about yeah. that um and but so I, carter caught that yes yeah. smart thank you carter nicely done yeah. carter um and so it kind of explains why gnosis is so like just well just, he, yeah he's not he elected. walls himself oh off yeah yeah Super completely mm-hmm. so, which is so you see that danger for akane who's still very green and mm-hmm. very much like affected by things yes. yeah like will she you know hard wall just like gnosa or will she end up like kogami yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, stay tuned, kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then um, finishing up episode five, yep. Lisa Liu says, goodness, what a great episode. Loved how they just explored the idea of social media communities. Are Miranda, Megan, Callie, and Mike really just avatars? Ha ha, JK. All you right. got me. You figured it out. Just disappeared. Just disappeared. <laughs> um, I enjoyed the pacing of this episode because they had enough plot development for the season overall while solving the immediate crime in front of them. I like mm-hmm. that too. I think that's yeah. a good point. Is like it was monster of the week. Like this show. That's how most mystery shows start because they're establishing characters and like how solving crimes in this universe works. I did like that. This had ramifications for much later on while also solving mm. this immediate crime. Right. Um, side note, they even have machines to kick down the door. Isn't that supposed to be the fun part of being police? <laughs> um, Lisa's totally happened. right. Like, isn't that part of the fun? Um, Boom. I uh, Speaking on the, the joke about us being avatars, there was another thing that really struck me in this episode was when um, the way Kogami figures out that the avatars have been stolen is he's saying uh, the popularity of these avatars increased uh, after they were stolen because a fan is better able to replicate the image of somebody than the person behind the avatar because they're a person. And so I was thinking about this in in terms of like my Twitter account, right? right? Like I feel like maybe somebody who like 
has followed my Twitter account for a while could probably tweet like me in the way that maybe there, like there's an image of me like where I'm always like yay anime and also murder like those are the two <laughs> things I like but in reality like I'm not always going to tweet about that because I am I have a full human who thinks about other things besides <laughs> anime and murder uh, which is um, interesting because it ties it back around to other things it's like you yeah. only have part of these characters however they present themselves and yet it's a reflection like last time we talked about how you know um all of these different characters including akane is like she's this weird little mini avatar that's how she thinks of herself Mm -hmm. so it's interesting that people are like i'm gonna i'm gonna represent you the way that i see you but they might be missing sort of the Mm -hmm underlining thing which is kind of interesting yeah it's like when you apply a trope to somebody like i i'm sure like like something i struggle with honestly being on an anime show is i'm like i'm not any anime trope like like i'm not the moe one i'm not the tsundere one but i like don't have to be any of those because i'm a person but i think sometimes it's really easy like i do this with things that i'm a fan of is like i'll watch something i'll be like oh my god he's totally the jock one who's gonna do that and like (laughs) It works when you don't know the full person. Like it works if you're projecting that onto a celebrity sure. or something. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. just going to use celebrities as a perfect yeah. example of what we do when we have our celebrity crushes. It's because we're seeing them how they're presented in movies and interviews. Mm-hmm. We don't see the full person, so we use cognitive dissonance to fill in the blanks. Yeah. Right, and it's like forming a headcanon about something where you're like, like I've seen so many headcanons about Overwatch characters, and the funniest thing is it's people just building up this character that fits neatly into a. This character would totally be like this and do this and do this, and it's really fun. But like, you don't have anything to go off of really except dialogue from the games but it'd be like oh yeah and Hanzo's totally the kind of guy who would make you breakfast in the morning and like I love that but also like that's kind of what this episode was about is like a fan of something is better able to present it in a way that other fans want to see because right. it eliminates everything that deviates from that perfect image that fits in that box. Exactly. That's so very profound. Long yeah. tangent, but that wow. was something that super <laughs> stuck with me from this episode. Um, and that's why I wanted to do a short uh, topic for the episode today because I'm like, <laughs> there's a lot there's to unpack. So much. <laughs> um, but let's move on to episode six. Yes. Um, Tyler so, DeBoer yeah. also has a good summary. So it says, after the revelation that Kogami was an inspector before he was an enforcer, we're treated a small flashback dream showing a former friend and colleague was killed on a case. Mm -hmm. He also finds out through a talk with the Bureau's chief that the reason Ginoza seems hard on everyone is that his father was branded an innate criminal and he's looked down upon because he may be one to do, to do, excuse me, to confirm genetic possibilities. Wait, I missed that. His dad did it was an innate criminal? (laughs) That uh, slipped. I didn't. I have no memory. Yeah. yeah. So his father was branded a criminal. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Tyler. Man. See, Callie learned something. <laughs> I watched it. I swear. I know. This is my second time watching. I didn't get that apart. <laughs> they're, they're, it's really, they show throw so much at you. So this is why these summaries are really helpful. This is why this is a perfect watch party candidate. So this is you. awesome. Okay, yeah. so we learned about the case. Kogamani went downhill from Akane's prying. The specimen case involved a pretty gruesome MO where the corpse mm. would be altered and displayed, hidden, then shown. Akane realizes the gruesome, gruesomeness of the case and apologizes to Yoi, who shrugs it off and keeps... Oops. And... Keeps, keeps eating. eating. Oh, yeah, it just keeps eating. It was funny. Okay, so I oh. totally be like you in this case. <laughs> Me too. I used to eat dinner while watching The Walking Dead. <laughs> that's when oh, I stumbled. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's right. He just keeps eating. I was no, like, I would have been hurt. I would have been like, what? Gruesome murders? Let's eat ramen. Like, <laughs> All right, the primary suspect went missing in the case went cold, leading to Kogami still trying to solve it to this day. We're whisked off to an all girls academy, and Oreo, the art club leader, is definitely giving off some creepy vibes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that girl was like radiating. I'm a killer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just stamp it on your forehead oh, already. Jeez. <laughs> Kogami looks at all the cases after a little testimony from the guy in episode three and believes the same person is setting all of these incidents up. Could it be this Makishima fellow? Um, the guy in episode three is the the, the the whipping boy from the factory. Yes. Yeah. Which is an amazing time. Okay. Yeah. Lastly, mm. to start off our new arc, we see a sculpture that's being displayed in a way similar to that cold old cold case. Man, that's some horror movie type stuff. And finally, Ori was shown to be collaborating with Makishima. Bad things lay ahead. Dun dun dun. Dun dun. And dun. so they do. Um, I love the because serial killers in real life often have like a uh, specific way they do things. I mean, mm-hmm. even dating back to Jack the Ripper, it was like, we know it's Jack the Ripper because this specific thing happened in every crime scene. Right. So I just, I 
I like how at first Ginoza is like, oh, we don't know. <laughs> it's like, I'm taking Konami out the case. <laughs> I don't like Ginoza. So, oh, yeah, yeah. so he's like, oh. <laughs> and that's how he sounds like in my head. And, um, <laughs> but so he's at first like, we don't know. And I'm like, okay, there's something called imitation killings. So it could have been an imitation murder, sure. but like more than likely it was mm. a very similar case. Sure. So I there's, was like, there's a through line here. I was like, hun, you got to be a little less... Um, Sassy towards Kunami. A little less Tim Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Gunn's a perfect human. Um, <laughs> I love Tim Gunn. Yeah, so I I don't know. Because I'm fascinated by this kind of thing, by the criminal mind, that's another thing that we're experiencing in this show is like enforcers, you don't want to like get too deep into trying to analyze the criminal mind because then you could become like the criminal mind, which uh-huh. is yeah. something I think you know as I says about Kogami. Um, and I, just, I find it very, very fascinating because it's like how do people solve these crimes? Like, how do you think? Like, oh yeah, and they probably like really wanted to preserve the body. I like that's not something I would naturally. How do you get into that mindset? Yeah, Uh how do you get into that mindset is one of one of the questions. Not questions, but that is something that any um, criminologists out there who want to answer these questions, (laughs) like, how do you do this? How do you separate yourself from this and yet get into the mind of a killer? My girlfriend actually majored in criminology. Oh really? All right, well, let's ask her because I want to know. Yeah, Uh, I super wish I had. I love criminology. Yeah. Um, And then uh, Lisa Liu says, the plot thickens. I'm really enjoying getting to know about Kogami's background, and I can't help but wonder if this is all foreshadowing about what Akane is going to go through next. Again, something that didn't occur to me for some (laughs) reason, because I was so focused on the case. I got way too caught up in the serial killer Mm -hmm. stuff. Um, So thank you for that. Uh, Also, genetics linked to psychopaths not confirmed yet. That's another detail from this episode is like, Genetics aren't confirmed to your psychopath, you. Uh, that doesn't mean they are. Like, it was like this obscure thing talking to Kogami, like, or, you know, I think they look similar, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, and then Lisa Liu says, I find that odd since schizophrenia and bipolar disorder pretty much have been shown to have a genetic predisposition. Um, yeah, that's that's true. Uh, most mental uh, disorders or illnesses have genetic, you, you, not yeah. that you'll mm-hmm. get it, but like there is a genetic predisposition. Um, yeah. So it's like, oh wow. Like, and it's hard to tell sometimes because like in the old days, they, they didn't, didn't have a word for they it. They didn't or, have a word for it yeah. or they were just like, she's hysteric. And it was like, no, that woman was depressed. Like if you ever read um, The Yellow Wallpaper? No. That mm-hmm. is a short story all about how a woman was depressed so they locked her in a room by herself until she went insane. Um, and it was like, Yeesh. she's crazy. And it was yeah. like, no, it's just a mental illness and you didn't know about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so that's the thing where like, I found out that like multiple of my like grandparents and great grandparents had like terrible anxiety symptoms, but like nobody knew that. It was just like, wow, your great grandma was really mean. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> she had really bad anxiety and depression. No wonder I'm like this. No, so, I got uh, I got yeah. slammed with OCD on both sides of my family. But I swear, up until about 10, 15 years ago, people didn't really have a diagnosis or talk about it very much. Yeah. It wasn't until I actually started working at IGN years ago that I met other people and I was like, oh. This is a real thing. It's not just me being weird and, and neurotic. Yeah, it's, it's a real thing. But back in the day, it's like you don't have a word for it. You have no way to to diagnose it. Yeah. So Yeah, and this goes back to from the previous watch party, if you didn't catch for episodes three and four. Mm-hmm. I did get in, a little bit into intrusive thoughts and more dis- discussion on mental illness. I did get an email about that. Somebody was saying they really enjoyed that discussion. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, if you have thoughts on that, I would love to hear them. I find it yeah, really interesting. Yeah, please. Your feedback um, is wonderful. Yeah, All and, of these are great emails yeah. that we got. And so. mental illness is something that's really important to me. Like, uh, you know, mental health is really important to me. So uh, mm-hmm. I find thinking about that uh, with relation to psychopaths really interesting. Um, All right. But, that's, uh, yeah, that's episode seven. Uh, we got to move on. Yeah, yeah. we do. Uh, yeah, we're running out of time. Episode seven. Um, Tyler DeBoer again. We got the body sculpture from being investigated uh, by our heroes. We got the body sculpture from being what? Uh, uh, well, anyway, the body sculpture <laughs> is being investigated by our heroes. Sorry, I think I just read that wrong. Uh, due to the relation to a previous case, Kogami is pulled from the investigation. Mm-hmm. Akane yes. goes to Kogami for a talk about the old case and his previous partner. Akane, we see you checking out Kogami's abs. <laughs> yeah. I did see you, and I was, I was also, also checking out Kogami's abs. <laughs> and you know I was, how I said I loved... the first time we've seen uh, I loved either. redheaded anime boys. I still do, but I really like Kogami a lot. Now. I was watching this, and I'm like, <laughs> Callie's probably watching this right now. Yeah. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then when she was like, uh, you need to put a shirt on, I was like, girl, me too, but also you idiot. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so Akane is like, what? Um, and I was also right there with her. Uh, I'm like, top 10 anime abs still needs to happen. We have some good candidates. Kogami. 
<laughs> You're in the yeah. running. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> we hear more about uh, Sasayama, a faulted but ultimately good-hearted man. So he was the one that's sort of like a womanizer. He would grab people's butts, which yep. I feel like makes you not super good-hearted, but he also was really defensive of a rape victim, apparently, from what the description was. Mm. So... Eh, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Um, <laughs> Oreo gives us some information about herself. Her father was an artist whose beliefs impacted her. She believes her art will enlighten humanity. And his art was the grotesque, uh, yeah. you know, I'm going to tell humanity. I, like, the justification was really convoluted to me, but it was like, I'm going to draw distorted, dismembered girls' bodies to tell you about the dangers of... Yeah, the world or so like it was just like yeah. this weird to me I feel like I need to like really listen to his explanation again because to me I was like that is some BS I don't it, it kind of reminded me of Saw the movies when you finally find out like Jigsaw's motivations mm -hmm. are like to get people to appreciate life more by trapping them in these horrible things live <laughs> or die make your choice and it's like you're a horrible yeah. human being you are yeah. not doing God's work here yeah, what are like, you doing it's I like that Brooklyn Nine-Nine quote like cool motive still murder <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm curious if uh, she was like that before or after she met Makishima? Because they don't really talk about that too yeah, much. Yeah, they don't get into that. But yeah, that, that whole, I mean, her childhood must have been, ugh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so continuing with Tyler, Makishima discusses his philosophy with another associate of his. He believes the system is hurting mankind. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, we get another body where Oreo continues to plan and create more. Um, yeah, touching on the philosophy, uh, basically uh, they talk about how stress is, uh, at, at to a certain extent, good for your body. Uh, Quick side note, if you have too much stress, your cortisol levels go out of control and then your metabolism shuts down like mine did. Uh, so please watch out for yourself and take care of yourself because it's very bad for your body. But to some extent, stress is good for you because it teaches you, like it's like a adrenaline, like fight or flight mm -hmm. thing. They yeah. kind of talk about the philosophy of you need a little bit of stress to motivate yourself and it helps you. And I, I do think that that makes sense. Like stress has motivated me to do better. And uh, I mean, that's obviously like a, totally just well it's all about checks and balances right, right. like Everything it's in you know you have a stress i've got so much work to do but it does it gives you that drive of fight but when it gets too high then you go in the opposite direction and you you shut down physically and mentally mm -hmm. right and so they're talking about how the civil system has basically eliminated all stress because it just decides your whole life path for you um which yeah i mean like stress the stress of like what am i going to do with my life really pushes some people to, to when you have the right amount of stress to do something you really want to do and mm -hmm. I think that's great so they're talking and that's their philosophy is like with no stress people have become catatonic vegetables basically because right. they have nothing driving them um, and they the civil system has eliminated everything that could be called a reason to live is what he says um, so I found that really interesting as well yeah. um, and we should just keep moving on yeah the next <laughs> comment is really interesting the whole mm -hmm. thing about the lighting in the art room I didn't even pick that up oh yeah uh, Australius uh, says, uh, the light in the art room, whereas the orange light from the setting sun indicated the end of the second victim's life. In the previous episode, the red light indicated that the danger or death awaited the third victim. Oh, I, I miss love stuff all like that. that. Stuff. Uh, yeah, I was like, <laughs> mind blown. <laughs> no, that is a great, like, I mean, that's something that maybe I should pay more attention to because mm -hmm. obviously anime is a visual medium and there are going to be cues like that. And there are some shows where I do notice that I think during five centimeters per second, I talked about that mm -hmm. a little bit or we did as a, as a group, but um, that I totally didn't. I mean, maybe like I noticed it passively, like, oh, it sets the mood, but I just loved getting that pointed out. So thank you. Yeah. Um, I should then, considering this is my second watch. Through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, to conclude, because we are running out of time, episode eight, Megan Murphy has uh, has quite the comment. Uh, go Murph. Um, it says, the worst villains are ones that are deeper than some surface level thirst for power or justice. Makishima appears charming, handsome, and eloquent. However, he's a brilliant and clean sociopath with a knack for puppeteering impressionable proxies. He taps into any darkness or insecurity and tempts them to act upon it, providing them with endless supplies or security to do so. However, when he decides he's done with them, snip, snip, their strings are cut and the puppets fall lifeless to the ground. I just mm. love that description so much. Arguably, the civil system created and enabled Makishima. He's abusing it and hacking it for his own murderous playground. When the world relies on technology for everything, human intuition or deductive reasoning are thrown out the window. Blind spots are created and living, breathing evil like Makishima creep in those blind spots, wreaking havoc without ever getting caught. 
Um, when the girl is crying in the rain about losing her friend, she's told to get over it or else her hue clouds up. And that's yeah. another thing that happens a lot in this show is kind of like, don't think about it, don't think about it. And that's like something my grandparents will do. We're like, well, we'll not talk about problems because that's how they become problems. And it's like, no, they're still there. Yeah. Um, this is a crazy world where like, if anything's on the news, the stress, the stress in the area will go up. Yeah. And then that just causes all. Yeah. It's, it, this is, it's, it's really hard. I, I think just, it's hard to to be in this in in a community where you want to know about these things, but then if you do, then you're susceptible to being you know cloudy. And yeah. Like, just like no one knows anything. Yeah, like they took the original specimen case off the news, I believe, yes. because it stressed people out so much. That's like. I mean, that happens to me. You know when you watch the news and you're like, I can't do this anymore. This is so depressing. I yeah. actually had a breakdown one day a few years ago. The, the news was so bad for 20 minutes straight. Like, I burst into tears and I had to turn it off. Yeah. Because I'm a news junkie and it takes a lot to, to get me to do that. But it was really bad. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it, your stress does yeah. start, mm-hmm. you know, rising when that's, that kind of thing happens. That's why self-care, I mean, like, just a quick note, because... Obviously, in psychopaths, the civil system is designed to do that for you. But like, self care is a skill, and it takes a lot to recognize when you've hit your limit, and it's hard, and you have to really think about it. It takes a lot of learning yourself. Um, but that's the, like you, you have you get to a point where you're like you have to shut the news off, or like I'm not going to go on Twitter anymore today because I just mm-hmm. don't want to read about this anymore. Yeah. And um, for example, so um, I just find it interesting. Like, the civil system seems to be trying to like an attempt at a solution to mental health problems in this world yeah when at least from my perspective a good solution has just been working really hard at getting the skills to deal with it sure mm-hmm. but you it's know? almost yeah. like this distrust of humanity in general like yeah. you don't have the discipline totally. to do anything for yourselves and you're all criminals anyway so we're going to yeah. take all these choices because then everyone will be nice and they'll be stress-free and yet mm. it's creating its own unique set of problems yeah. which is yeah. what point. makes the show so it's fascinating so fascinating yeah, yeah. um All right, continue with Megan uh, Murphy. Uh, The civil system won't even allow humans to feel guilt or remorse or mourn those they love. Isn't grief a sign of mental release and healing for some people? If it's all bottled up, won't it turn into explosive rage and regret later on or worsen depression? And would that not make things up for their hue even worse? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another consideration. It's like if you don't confront your feelings. Like, have you ever been like, really mad at like a significant other for like a series of yeah. small things <laughs> or like maybe they did something you're like I'll write this off but I'm gonna remember this yeah mm-hmm. and then like months later they like don't empty the dishwasher or something and you're like oh my god you don't do anything and you're like kind of blow up that happened to me once like in like my first relationship where like I was not good at handling that sort of stuff and the communication wasn't that good so I was like I just I think I was like making the bed and he like wasn't helping because it was like a one person job, but I also was like, oh my God, why don't you ever help me with anything? And it just exploded when really I could have just been like, hey, remember that time you like didn't help with the groceries and I was sort of mad? Like I, you could handle it yeah, yeah. in small saying. doses. Mm-hmm. Um, so it sounds like when you're just like, oh, don't think about it, it'll cloud your hue. You're really just setting yourself up for a much cloudier sure. hue later It's gonna on. come out somehow. Exactly. Yeah, it's gonna come out well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, these are all things, things I think about when I watch this show because yeah. it does, like we said earlier, it does have a place in reality, and so it makes me think about my own reality. Yep. It's really thought-provoking for me, um, and obviously for Megan, because she poses all these really interesting questions about what might happen. Um, and then continuing on, uh, when Rikaka gets assassinated, the sequence bought, brought to mind a prey attempting escape from an impending hunter. Instead of bloodhounds, this hunter had metal cyborg dogs sniffing Rikako out. Her foot was caught in a bear trap, and she was discovered and literally killed off with the gun of the killer that Makishima was, has working under him. Pawns killing pawns. Rikako's last words remind this man that one day Makishima will be done with him, too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's, that's one of those things like no, Foreshadow. what is it, no honor among thieves or whatever? Like, yeah. Um, and then I just, uh, because we're really low on time, uh, skipping ahead a little bit, uh, the humming during the hunt while Makishima recites Shakespeare, there are no words to describe how that juxtaposition was terrifying. We've left off with the cliffhanger that Kogami is now targeted as the next puppet. However, if Kogami is already suspicious of a man named Makishima, maybe there will be some double agent work at play? That is another thing mm. that, yeah. I just love the, the, I, the Facebook group is full of foresight that I was just not full of when I was watching yeah. these episodes. <laughs> because I watched them at night and frankly during the sixth episode, it was episode six, I was watching it um, and I was like, 
it was like 2 a.m. or something. I was like, I gotta watch it. And then I'm like falling asleep and then I five minutes in the show have passed and I was like, what's going on? But this is so, a great thing that goes back yeah. around to rewatching the show. You pick up on these little things. You're like, yeah. oh my God, there's so much symbolism here mm-hmm. and foreshadowing. Dude, that Shakespeare quote just gave me shivers as yeah. as the hunt was going on. Mm. Man. Yeah. Let's hope uh, more of that. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I really like Megan's last comment to wrap this up. Uh, also, this is some more shallow analysis, but Akane cross Kagami, <laughs> I ship it like UPS. <laughs> that is the new thing I'm going to say because. Ship uh, it like UPS. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she is so into him. Have you seen her? Like when she's like actually physically turning to look at his abs, I was like, dang, girl. <laughs> yeah, do like, what you do. Yeah, I mean, like maybe. And she's technically his boss. Oh, we go. oh, that's really oh, bad. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, first, like, my disturbing. first, my, my like, split Player. second initial reaction was, uh, and then I was like, mm, no. Mm. Um, uh, but yeah, so there was so much to unpack, and we took a lot of time, but it is time for us to wrap up and go eat lunch, because I'm sure we're all hungry. My stomach was actually growling earlier. <laughs> yes. Um, so thank you for joining us for the watch party this week. Um, that was, again, two watch parties in one. Mm-hmm. Next week, will we, blah, 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 we we will be back there we go with episodes nine, nine and ten, ten yes um of psychopaths so please continue to comment because it helps us mm-hmm. hopefully it helps you guys enjoy the show more uh, this is one of my favorite parts of the watch party is learning yeah. stuff about a show that i didn't think about because i was busy thinking about other stuff yeah. lighting and the power of all of our minds that's <laughs> right combined combined yeah. um so before we leave what are you guys working on anything Ooh. to plug uh last episode of zerk coming up this Friday. Other than that, you can catch me on Twitter at M E G H A N underscore I G N, Instagram at Celtic underscore Queen underscore Meg. I had to do all those underscores because everyone took all the everyone names that them. I thought of and yeah. I was like, come on, help. <laughs> you know, and Twitch stream, all that good stuff. You know, Judge is obviously, you know where to find me. <laughs> it's yeah. all good. Mike, what are you doing? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm always syndicating. So we have a lot of like games coming out uh, today that you should definitely check out. A Recore. Uh, so there's some Dead Rising HD collection. Pac-Man championship Pac- yeah, thing. There's a, there's a lot of stuff um, on IGN. Definitely check those out. Yeah. Um, also, thank again for uh, sharing your comments. Uh, we have a lot of comments this, this watch party, and I was trying to like pick some, but then there was just so many, and I couldn't. Ah. So uh, so keep sharing them. We're reading them. Thank you for We're that. We're reading them. Um, yeah. Yes. And yeah, you can follow me at XPMNems on Twitter. Uh, same thing with Instagram, I think. <laughs> and, uh, Question mark? Yeah. Uh, and talk to me about uh, all the anime. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, speaking of anime, uh, yay anime, um, yeah. the Pokemon Generations animated yes. uh, series, it's a series of shorts. Um, we got a trailer for that today and because we record on Tuesday. Um, I also did a Rewind Theater, which is where we break down trailers. Um, it's one of IGN's video things that we do. Mm -hmm. Um, So I went through and I picked out and identified every single frame of that trailer and what scene from the game it is referencing. So if you are curious, because the Generations series, it's a series of shorts that are like three to five minutes on Pokemon's YouTube channel, Mm -hmm. um, and they're covering off on Generations 1 through 6 and expanding the game stories. So it's kind of, it's based on the games, not the existing anime. Yes. Um, So I went through and I was like, this is from Gold, Silver, and Crystal, and this refers Mm -hmm. to this thing, and this is definitely this. So if you're curious, um, you can find that. Um, I just re- recorded it, so I don't have a headline yet, but it's going to be like <laughs> like Easter eggs in the Pokemon Generation trailer. Pokemon, yeah. awesomeness. Yeah. I'll also tweet it out, which you can see at uh, Inky Dojiko, I-N-K-Y-D-O-J-I-K-K-O <laughs> on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and uh, let me know if I rambled too much about mental <laughs> mental health, but I care oh, a lot. No. Um, no, so yeah. yeah, so thank you guys so much for joining us for episode 64. We'll be back next week with episode 65. What? what? Damn, <laughs> <laughs> you, can do the you can retire at 65, right? It's something. It's something. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. All right, bye. Bye. Hey, anime. Hey, anime. Hey, anime. <laughs>